Hello everyone, welcome to week two of this training for the ultra vlog. So funnily enough, like I said last last week, that Monday always starts with rest, just the way my week goes and then basically every other day I'm doing something. But rest doesn't always mean that I'm going to just be sitting in my backside and um, doing nothing. What a lot of people end up doing, think it's more productive. Now there is a lot of research out there with things like active recovery and stuff. So. I use this day um, to take Frank out his big walk, uh, so I've got a golden retriever and if I don't walk Frank a big walk, my life's not going to be worth living, he does not he does not want to sit about the house very often, so he's out right now, he's loving it, it's nice and frosty, it's like minus four I think out here, um, it's really really cold, um, but because all the ground's really really hard, um, I take him a big walk through the, what would normally be muddy places and he absolutely loves it, as I said, he just runs wild. Um, so active recovery today, so what I focus on is getting a certain number of steps, like normally make sure I'm at about that 10,000 mark, but I don't, I can hit way over that normally just by being active, walking to places and that kind of thing, you know. Um, so, hi, week two, just take Frank out this walk. Just enjoy it with them. That's the thing about when people have dogs and are quite lazy with their dogs. And, and I'm not getting at anyone here, but Frank just lives for when he goes out a walk. So, like, that's his biggest part of that day. And sometimes I'm quite guilty of thinking to myself, like, oh, for God's sake, I can't be bothered. And I do sometimes act like that. But a lot of the times now I'm trying to remember that this is only his fun part of the day, you know, this is what he basically loves for, you know, he loves for his walk every day. So, he normally always try and give him his one or two walks, but aye, I'll just enjoy this with him. Right guys, it's Tuesday and I'm currently out. Again, about two miles into my five mile run. A wee bit faster pace, but nothing crazy. So it's a very cold one today. And one of the things I've learned with running, is especially in the cold, is still wear your sunshades because I was running in the cold yesterday, well, walking in the cold yesterday, running in the cold on Sunday, and my eyes were streaming, like, absolutely, like, as if you were crying, you know, um, but it was just too cold there getting to them, so, I running in the cold, still wearing my shades, even though some people were looking at me right now going, it's not even sunny, what are you wearing shades for? That's why I'm wearing shades. So, Tuesday, Simple, easy, five miles. Tomorrow morning, we're back in the gym. Right guys, so, just finished my first house sprint, as you can hear. I'm not too well today, just a bit of cold though. Um, so I'll wait till I finish these, but just know this is Thursday and they're getting done. So, when I get back in the house, I'll catch up with you. Right guys, so like I said, Thursday hill sprints are done. So it was seven sprints a day. And like I said, I've had a bit of a cold today. And the last couple of days actually, um, my wee boy's been no well. He's had quite bad conjunctivitis that seems to be clearing up um, pretty well, to be honest with you. But the whole kind of point in like talking about this is like throughout the course of these kind of journeys, whether you're on a weight loss journey or you've got some goal or anything like that, you're gonna get things like this all the time. Like you've got, you're gonna be injured. You're gonna be no well. Your kids are not gonna be well. Your wife, your husband, your whoever, they're gonna be no well at some point. And um, there's gonna be life events, uh, things that happen all the time, and you need to keep going. Unfortunately, not unfortunately. You I mean you reap the rewards of achieving the goal? But um, I, I just see a lot of people when something happens, they'll post it on social media victim of circumstance and stuff and listen trust me I, I know that bad shit happens but ultimately they're all it's always going to happen listen guys it's always going to happen so i've got a bad cold and um, it's not in my chest or that or i wouldn't do anything anything kind of like from the kind of chest area down like if it's in my lungs and stuff you really shouldn't do it but right now it's just quite sinusy if it gets any worse then I will address it then, um, I'll not be doing anything. So yesterday, I was at the gym, yesterday morning, so went and done, again, same programme as last week, which was, again, goblet squats, in the back hyper extensions, reverse lunges, line leg curls, um, a pull up and push up superset, and then the kettlebell windmills. With the kettlebell windmills, 
Uh, these are something I've not done in years and I'm still trying to perfect them. And this is one of the things about people against like tripods and filming in the gym. Like I get it from a privacy point of view. And if anybody ever says to me, listen, I don't want to be in your film, I don't want to be in your film. Absolutely, like no bother, sorry. Just ignore it, kick it over, whatever. But I'm a big believer with me and all my clients, like to really see yourself um, technique wise, I think it's invaluable. I get, I, I insist all my clients kind of send it to me. So film yourself, I literally, if anybody sees me in the gym, I, I know some people watch these that will see me in the gym, you'll see me film this stuff. And it's not me looking to see if I've got a good angle. It's, look, it's me looking at literally watching back my technique. And there's some things even like when I watch these back with the, the kettlebell windmills that I don't like. Now, in terms of programming, I'm going to cover this very quickly. Um, I'll, I'll link this down below, but I, I sent quite a few people. Um, there was like kind of a seminar speech type thing with the current World's Strongest Man, Mitchell Hooper, Canadian guy, and a very, very, uh, very intelligent guy as well. But not to go into all that, you can watch it yourself. But he basically talks about how he programmed himself um, how you should program even your grandmother or something like that he talks about and um, but it's the way I've been programming people for years and it's in terms of human movement patterns because it'll transfer over to everything every sport and all that which is like some sort of squat some sort of hip hinge pushing in different directions pulling in different directions and usually some sort of load and carry um, which you typically can cross over with things like walking lunges alternative lunges and stuff because you're holding the weight um, but I don't make my programming too fancy, especially when it's like a, a goal like this. It will, it will get a lot more specific depending on what someone is training for, of course. It's a big variable in terms of how you program someone. But in terms of like how you would program someone, there's two main things that's going to come into play here when you would change someone's program. Specificity, obviously someone needs to be training in a specific way in order for them to achieve their goal, right? You wouldn't get a marathon runner training the same way as a bodybuilder, right? That's, that's a given, right? But the other one that people kind of fall in the bracket under um, more so would be monotony. Um, a lot of people give up on their programs and their goals and stuff because they generally, they're getting, well, number one is they don't see results, but number two is uh, they get bored. They get bored of what they're doing. So I like to keep all my training kind of basic and normally with all my clients, we keep it very basic unless those two factors really, really change. So again, um, it was sprints today. It's actually a rest day tomorrow, but I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow night as well and do some some upper body stuff and it was um, I've got I think it's an 11 mile run on Saturday so probably not filming again to Saturday hopefully this will clear up a wee bit so it's just trying to get good early nights plenty of hydration plenty of rest somewhere in there and hopefully we'll be healed up breathing fine by Saturday right guys so just took my 11 mile run again trying to be a bit more controlled I've actually had to walk some it because I was having to message people back and forth from Facebook marketplace now don't sell anything on that. That thing's fucking terrible. I nearly got scammed there, I nearly fell for it. So I, 11 miles today, so yesterday, Friday, as I got up in the morning, and it's work. Well, I walk dog, and then it's work. So, playing plenty of emails, programming, Zoom calls, etc. And then go to the gym at night. And as you can see here, nothing too fancy. Just good upper body movements, keeping it simple, training hard, things like that. So. This run will be a wee bit easier in terms of, I'm running a wee bit faster than now, but that's just simply because I've had to walk some, because it's texting back and forth, and meshing back and forth, but like I said, I'm just not going to fall for it anymore. So, as I said, 11 miles today, and a 3 mile recovery run uh, tomorrow, so I'll draw an end to the vlog here. Remember, if you want to buy, buy me a coffee and buy Frank some sausages and um, a big thanks to Sophie who got us our first coffee and sausages um, of the vlogs but if you want to do so just go to the link in the description and anything would be much appreciated so just going to call an end to the vlog now we're covering on tomorrow and we're going to change things up a wee bit next week in terms of what kind of vlog we're going to do so hopefully you'll stick around leave a like, leave a comment and I'll catch up with you soon